Hi all, today we are going to discuss inductance of composite conductor lines. So before proceeding to the inductance of composite conductor lines, better take the composite conductor of one set of the conductor, then we will proceed further. So first I am starting with flux linkages of one conductor in a group of conductors. Let us assume there are a group of conductors, I am representing different conductors. Let us assume like this up to there are different conductors. I am taking one, two, let us take it as three. Like this, there are some n conductors. So, in order to calculate the flux linkages, instead of taking actually flux extends up to infinite, instead of up to infinite, let us take some point P, which is very far from this respect to strands or respect to strands of this conductor. Let us assume the distance of this particular strand number 1 with respect to point P, so I can represent by is D1P. So, similar is the case 2 is having 2 D2P. Similar is the case the 3 will be D3P like that it will be for nth conductor that distance is equal to d nth strand with respect to the point p and i am also assuming that this is having the currents the respect to currents that are passing through them are i1 i2 i3 etc up to i n in the respect to strands and i am also assuming the sum of the currents i1 plus i2 plus i3 etc up to i n will be equal to 0 because practically whenever you take a set of conductors, one will act as a 2 and the second conductor will act as a return path. When you take the set, the set current will automatically equal to 0. That's why I am taking this assumption. So, this point P is very far. So, let us try to calculate the flux linkages of conductor 1, the flux linkages of conductor 1 with respect to the current passing through its own conductor. That means the current passing through conductor 1 up to the point number P. So, this I can write as 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7, we have seen in the last class, this will be ln of the distance of the point. The distance of the point will be, because we are taking from conductor number 1 to conductor number P, divided by, we have to take the R dash of the respective conductor. So, this is R1 dash. This will be Weber turns per meter. We have seen how this came in the last class. If you have doubt, you can refer to my previous lecture. I have discussed in detail there. So, where this value of this R1 dash will be equal to 0.7788 times of R1. This is due to on account of the internal flux linkages. This also we have discussed in last class. Similar is the case, the flux linkages of conductor 1 will be there due to the second conductor also, which we can call as a mutual inductance or mutual flux linkages. So, it will be for up to point P due to the current passing through the conductor number 2. So, this will be equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of up to what distance you are taking, you have to take the distance up to D2P divided by the distance between conductor 1 and 2. So, how this comes? So, let me try to explain this. So, I am taking that, let us assume this is my conductor number 2, this is my conductor number 1. So, the flux that is comes around, this will be sun circling this one. As per Ampere's law, it will be radially going on, like this it will go on linking. So, you can see here, so, whichever flux is produced from the center of this conductor up to the surface of this conductor, this is not linking with the conductor number 1. So, this particular flux is not linking with the conductor 1. Only the flux that is in the radius greater than the distance between conductor 2 and conductor 1, only that will be responsible for the production of the flux linkages. That's why I have taken the distance as a distance between conductor number 2 and the conductor number 1. Because from there only the flux linkages are starting. That's the reason I have taken as a D12 distance between conductor 1 and conductor number 2. I hope this is clear to you. So, only beyond this conductor only they are linking with the conductor number 1. Okay. So, now let us proceed further. So, I can write my total flux linkages on the conductor 1 up to point P due to current passing through all the conductors. I can write as 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into current passing through the first conductor is I1 multiplied by D1 to P divided by R1 dash. Similar is the case due to current I2, this will be I2 into ln of D2 to P because it is extending up to point P that radius and we have to take from the distance only, after that only it is linking, so D12, like this it will extend, similarly for the nth conductor due to nth conductor, ln of dnp divided by D1n, let us take it as equation number 1, this, e this units for this will be Weber turns per meter. So, this I can rearrange, so this can be rearranged as, I am just separating them into two parts, so 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7, I1 into ln of 1 by r1 dash plus i2 into ln of 1 by 
d12 plus etc plus in into ln of 1 by d1n. So, this is separated and the second one whatever numerator comes that I want to convert in the denominator form. So, I am keeping a minus sign here 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into i1 into ln of 1 by d1p like that I can write or we can write plus. So, let us do it later on. So, d1p plus i2 into ln of d2p because using any way we are going to get the answer. So, i n into ln of d n p. This is what we get. So, the numerator I have separated out. So, now as the point p is approaching towards infinity, that means limit of this point p tends to infinity. So, in that case this equation will be, so this d 1 p, this d 2 p, so all will be approximately equal to each other. This will be approximately equal to d n p. Let us take this distance as d where this distance will be approximately equal to infinite as it is approaching towards infinite. Let us take it as d, then we will take it as infinite to get this. So, then I can get this second term, whatever the second term is there, this second term I can write like this, this is 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7. So, this ln of as d 1 p, d 2 p all are equal, this you can write as ln of d into i 1 plus i 2 plus etc up to plus i n. This is what we get. So, the sum of these currents is equal to 0. We have already seen this assumption before. So, as this is equal to 0, this entire term will be equal to 0. So, irrespective of what is the distance you are taking, so as this term is equal to 0, the product will be obviously equal to 0. So, we can tell that only the first term will be remaining or we can tell the value of the flux linkages will be on the first conductor will be 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into I1 ln of 1 by R1 dash plus i2 into ln of 1 by d12 plus etc of 2 this will be i n into 1 by d1 n. So, this will be in Weber turns per meter. So, let us take it as equation number 2. Generally, this value of r1 dash is sometimes represented as a d11 which is called as self distance. Self distance or it is also called as self gmd. We are going to tell this in detail in the coming derivation. So, up to here I hope it is clear to you. Now, let us see what will be the inductance of the composite conductor lines. So, I am taking the inductance of composite conductor lines. So, for deciding this one, let us assume there are two conductors. So, I am assuming this is the conductor number A. This conductor is A. It is having 1, 2, 3, 4 like that up to let us assume x number of strands in this. And similarly, the conductor B is lying here. This is my conductor B which the strands are 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash like that up to it is having a number of strands is equal to y. That means in conductor A x strands are there and conductor B y strands are there. And let us also assume that the current passing by the conductor A let us take it as i and this conductor b acts as a return path so the current passing through it is minus i so obviously from this i can calculate the current density or current per strand current passing through each strand will be i am assuming the uniform current density so this will become i divided by number of strands so number of strands is equal to x this is for conductor a so similarly the current per strand in conductor b will be equal to minus i divided by y because the current is opposite minus i divided by total number of strands are y. So, with the, based on these assumptions, I am going to proceed. So, from equation number 2, I can calculate the flux linkages of the strand number 1 in the first conductor can be written as 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into the current passing through each strand is i by x into ln of 1 by r1 dash plus ln of 1 by d12 etc up to ln of 1 by d1 x because x number of strands are there. Similarly, due to the second conductor because the current direction is opposite that is why I am writing as 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into i by y. Actually, it should be plus only. Why I have written minus? Because the current is minus i by y. The current density of each one is minus i by y that is why minus sign came here. Please remember this one. This will become ln of 1 divided by distance between 1 to 1 dash that means first conductor first strand. So, this strand to 1 dash, I am taking up to here, this is the distance between these two. So, similar is the case ln of 1 by the strand number 1 to 2 dash. So, like that we have to take up to 
ln of 1 by distance between strand number 1 to the strand y in the second conductor or the second bunch of the conductors. So, from this I can simplify this I can write my value of the lambda is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into i into ln of this 1 by x I am taking inside. So, this will become x root. So, similarly 1 by y I am taking inside. So, this will become y root. So, this will become y root of. So, all these distances will be added there. So, this will become d1 1 dash then d1 2 dash etc of 2 d1 y divided by and the denominator will be x root of r1 dash into d1 2 d1 3 etc of 2 d1 x. This will be in Weber terms per meter. Let us take it as equation number 3 and generally this r1 dash can be represented in terms of d1 1 also. d1 1 means distance of the conductor with respect to tone conductor we have to multiply with 0 0.7788 times of the radius of the conductor. So, that is actually the called as self GMD. Now, the inductance of strand 1. So, the inductance of strand 1 is I can tell L1 is equal to this flux linkages per current. So, current per each strand will be I by x. So, this will be equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into this x will come to the numerator x into ln of this y root of this will be d11 dash d12 dash etc of 2 d1y divided by this x root of r1 dash d12 d13 etc of 2 d1x. This will be in Weber terms per meter and that we are dividing with the turns. So, this will become in Weber's. So, now similar is the case I can calculate the inductance of the second strand. So, inductance of the second strand will be again equal to lambda 2 divided by flux linkages by current passing through it is i by x. So, this also will be equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into x into ln of that y root of d11 dash d12 dash etc d1y divided by x root of r1 dash into d12 d13 etc d1x because x number of strands are there in the first conductor. So, these units are will be in Henry. So, Henry per meter length. So, these are the units of the inductance. So, as the different strands are having different value of the inductance, the average inductance of the strands. So, the average inductance of the strands of conductor A, this will be equal to we have to take the average value, average value will be L1 plus L2 plus etc of 2, there are x number of strands divided by total number of strands are x, this gives the average value. So, now you can see here each strand is connected in parallel to each other because they are connected to each other together, actually we can assume that whatever inductance produced by each one is connected in parallel to the second one, they are connected in parallel. As they are connected in parallel, the parallel combination of resistance we know that if resistances are equal, we have to divide by the total number of resistance that gives the parallel combination or we can tell the net value of the inductance due to this will be divided by the total number of strands that is the one. So, as they are connected in parallel we can tell the inductance of A will be equal to this L average value average value of each one divided by total number of strands this will come. So, this I can write as L1 plus L2 plus etc up to Lx divided by x into x will become x square. So, here I am writing on a glass screen that is why handwriting does not come properly. That is why I am providing the complete handwritten material in the description of this video. You can please download from the link provided there. Here you try to understand the concept. Remaining all the required theory you can please download from there. There I have written the complete theory. Here I am trying to avoid the theory because the handwriting does not come properly here you will not be able to understand. Okay. Next let us proceed. So, I can write my value of LA will be equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln into if you combine all these things l1 plus l2 up to etc. So, this will become xy root of this will be d11 1, 1, 1 dash d12 2, 2 dash that means we are taking the distance of first conductor to the second conductor each strand of first conductor to each other strand of the second conductor. So, I am taking strand 1 to first strand strand 1 to second strand like that for up the first strand of the x conductor similar is the case second strand of the first conductor distance with respect to each strand of the second conductor t2 2, 2 dash up to d2y like that it will be there up to dx because x number of strands are there in first conductor up to 1 dash dx 2 dash up to dxy 
these many conductors are there so total number of combinations that comes is x different combinations comes and each one is making a distance of y and similarly x combinations are there that's why square root of x y is coming here please remember this similar is the case in the denominator so denominator becomes x square total x square distances comes each conductor is taken the distance with respect to all the conductors so like strand number one with respect to strand one one with respect to two similarly one with respect to x similar is the case strand number two with respect to one strand number two with respect to two etc of two two with respect to x like that it will be strand number x with respect to one up to strand number of x with respect to x that means we are taking the distance of its own conductor so this i can write as la is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of dm divided by dsa in henry per meter so here the numerator of this that is called as a dm this is called as the mutual geometric mean distance or this is also called as mutual gmd mutual gmd gmd stands for geometric mean distance or simply it is also called as a gmd of the conductor what is the meaning of the gmd we have to take the geometric mean distance or the distance between each strand of the conductor a that means each strand of conductor a to each strand of conductor number b so every strand of conductor number b like that you have to take for all the strands take the geometric mean that is given by geometric mean distance so it will have a combination of let us assume x strands are there in this y strands are there total combination will be x multiplied by y x y through so those many combinations will come you have to take the mean of them so similar is the case the value of dsa is also called as self gmd or self geometric mean distance or it is also called as gmr this stands for geometric mean radius so mean radius of the conductor is changed now it is called as geometric mean radius so what we do if you are taking the conductor a it is having some strands x number of strands we have to take distance between every strands to all the remaining strands including its own strand so that means total let us assume x combinations are there so each conductor will have each strand will have x combinations like that x strands are there total x square combinations will come we will take the distance of each strand to the other strand so that's why it is called as self gmd or geometric mean radius so this concept is very much useful while analyzing the numericals we can directly calculate the gmr and gmd and from that we can calculate it i hope the gmr and the gmd concept is clear to you and if the number of conductors is only one so that will become equal to only one conductor is there this becomes one one this gmr this one one is nothing but to account for the internal flux linkages it will be equal to 0.7788 times of the radius of this conductor let us assume radius of this conductor is equal to r1 so remaining distances will be taken as a distances only i hope this is clear to you so similar way i can calculate the inductance due to b again this will be 10 into minus to the power of minus 7 into ln of dm divided by dsb self distance of conductor b so this is dsb is self gmd of conductor b or gmr of conductor number b let us assume if the conductor a and b are identical this is a special case so when they are identical the value of dsa will be equal to dsb will be equal to some let us assume some ds so let us take an exemption so i can calculate my loop inductance because the conductor is forming a loop so l will be equal to the inductance of first conductor plus inductance of second conductor so this will be equal to 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 ln of dm divided by dsa plus 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 into ln of dm divided by dsb this is what we get so in our example we are taking dsa is equal to dsb assuming they are identical so this will become 4 into 10 to the power of minus 7 ln of dm divided by ds this is in henry's per meter so this can also be written as 0.92 into if you are converting ln to logarithm this will become log of dm by ds this will be in milli henry per kilometer so in this way you can calculate the inductance of the bundled conductors because practically we always go for azsr conductors which will have a bundled of a bundle or a set of the conductors in each conductor so you have to calculate the self gmd and the mutual gmd or gmr of gmd of each conductor and then substitute for calculating the inductance of your 
transmission line. So, in this way, you can calculate the loop inductance will be 4 into 10 to the power of minus 5 or individual conductor will be 2 into 10 to the power of minus 7 and using this I can calculate my inductance. I hope how to calculate the inductance of the bundled conductors or stranded conductors is clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.